Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2021 Honda Africa Twin CRF 1100L. First up, this is one of four different Africa Twin models for 2021. This is the cheapest of the four. It's the manual transmission base model and its retail price comes in at $14,399. The second Africa Twin model is the exact same thing you see here but with Honda's DCT automatic transmission and that bumps the price up to $15,199. Then you have the third Africa Twin model, which is the Adventure Sports ES version with a manual transmission that comes in at $17,199, followed up by the fourth version being the Adventure Sports ES DCT, which is the automatic transmission model, and it's the most expensive, coming in at $17,999. So technically you have two different Africa Twin models, but with the option of a manual or a DCT automatic transmission on both to make it four. I'll have a new video soon covering the Adventure Sports ES models in detail as this video is mainly on the base model but we'll still touch on things that set the Africa Twin models apart. But in short, what do you get for an extra $2,800 on the Adventure Sports ES models? Highlights include Showa's electronically equipped ride adjustment, semi-dynamic suspension, tubeless tires, a larger 6.5 gallon fuel tank, heated grips, a taller windscreen, a larger skid plate, an aluminum rear rack, three-stage cornering lights, and a 12-volt outlet are the added features. 2800 sounds like a lot until you start to add up everything, and we'll do a separate video soon to dive into more of the changes on the Adventure Sports ES models. I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. And next up, what did Honda change for 2021 on the Africa Twin? Not much as it went through a major overhaul in 2020. In 2021, we saw the introduction of new color options, and when it comes to color options, you're rather limited. If you want the standard Africa Twin, you only have the pearl white tricolor, and if you want one of the Adventure Sports ES models, then you better like black, as you only have darkness black metallic available to choose from. Another change for 2021 is that you finally have Android Auto on the Africa Twin starting in February of 2021. And next up, we'll get to a few numbers. Curb weight, Honor comes in at 501 pounds, and that's full of all fluids, ready to ride. The Adventure Sports ES model comes in at 530 pounds, and if you opt for the DCT transmission, it will add 23 pounds to either model. The fuel tank on the standard models holds right at five gallons, and with a rating of 48 miles per gallon on the manual and 49 miles per gallon on the DCT, your range is easily over 200 miles on a tank. The seat height is adjustable between the two positions, 34.3 inches and 33.6 inches. To allow even more adjustment, higher and lower seats are available as accessories from Honda, and the ground clearance comes in at 9.8 inches. Both Africa Twin versions feature a 45 millimeter cartridge type inverted Showa fork with a 9.1 inches of travel. However, the Adventure Sports ES models do have Showa's EERA that has five different modes and electronically adjustable versus doing your adjustments manually. The top triple clamp is a cast aluminum while the bottom is forged. The ProLink rear suspension offers 9.4 inches of travel. A spherical solid pillow ball mount is used at the top of the shock to minimize deflection and help achieve a precise feel in varying conditions and the aluminum swing arm is based off the Sierra 450R motocrosser. Front and rear suspension on the standard version of the Africa Twin are fully adjustable, including preload, compression dampening, and rebound dampening, with tuning changes accomplished via traditional dials and knobs, unless you opt for the Adventure Sports ES models with Showa's electronic suspension. And next up, let's get to the braking side of things. All Africa Twin models have a very advanced ABS system, Separate modes for on-road and off-road work together with different riding modes allowing application-specific braking performance. How advanced is it? It's not like the setups you'll see on a more budget-based model like the CBR500R. This system can adapt 
during trail braking when the IMU detects the lean angle and the wheel sensors detect the acceleration the system closely monitors both wheel slip rates and makes necessary adjustments in braking pressure. During sudden braking, the ABS system reads IMU information to detect rear wheel lift and precisely controls braking pressure to suppress it. Now you cannot turn off the ABS up front, but you can turn off ABS in the rear if you prefer to separate front and rear braking performance, and that way you can lock the rear brake up if needed. When it comes to the brakes themselves, up front you have two four piston hydraulic calipers with 310 millimeter discs and out back is a single piston hydraulic caliper with a 256 millimeter disc. Throttle by wire is used on the Africa Twin featuring a Bosch IMU that performs real time six axis measurements to identify the motorcycle's position and movement. It's reading angle and rate for roll, pitch and yaw. This maximizes the accuracy of various controls and systems, including shifting if you have the DCT model, Honda selectable torque control, suspension, and lighting settings if you have the Adventure Sports ES model, and it's also tied into the braking system as well. That brings us to the next part, which is probably one of the best things about this bike, and that's the engine. The engine has been such a hit for Honda that they not only use it in the Africa Twin, but they also use variations of it in the Honda Talon 1000 model lineup and the Pioneer 1000 model lineup, and you can't forget the new Rebel 1100 too. Honda is also working on another new model using the same engine for their motorcycle lineup, so keep an eye out for that news coming soon. The Africa Twin has a water-cooled, single overhead cam, 8-valve, parallel twin engine configuration. Displacement is 1084 cc's with a 92 and 81 and a half millimeter bore and stroke. The cylinder sleeves are aluminum helping to minimize weight. The 270 degree phased crankshaft and firing interval create the engine's distinctive throb and the 46 millimeter throttle body's injector angle delivers a direct spray into the twin spark combustion chambers. The crankcases are split vertically and the water pump is housed within the clutch casing with a thermostat integrated into the cylinder head. The water and oil pumps are driven by the engine's balancer shafts. These features contribute to the engine being compact and short and to optimize ground clearance. Honda's single overhead cam Unicam valve train is a feature from their Sierra 450R dirt bike and the low set position of the cast camshaft contributes to the compact nature of the cylinder head. The engine uses a dry sump and intake lower crankcase oil storage allowing a shallow pan depth and reducing overall engine height. As the pressure fed pump is located within the oil tank, there is no need for a pressure feed passage, again saving weight and space. And when it comes to maintaining this engine, it's not going to break the bank either, with recommended oil changes every 8,000 miles and valve inspections every 16,000 miles after your first scheduled service at 600 miles. And here's a quick look at the maintenance schedule to give you an idea as to what's recommended and when it's recommended for the Africa Twin lineup. And finishing up with the engine, that brings us to the exhaust, which has a, a muffler that features a single inlet and dual outlets with an exhaust control valve, similar to that on the CBR1000RR, located just downstream of the split and the main pipe. The exhaust valve closes off the larger pipe at low RPM for a pulsating fill, but opens up at higher RPM for better flow. And next up, let's start her up and let you hear what she sounds like in stock form.
and tying back in with the IMU that we briefly mentioned earlier, the Africa Twins Honda Selectable Torque Control utilizes the IMU, enabling smooth slide control and wheelie control. With Honda Selectable Torque Control, the ECU uses data from sensors on the front and rear wheels to identify different situations. When the rear wheel accelerates suddenly, but the front wheel doesn't, the system concludes that rear tire spin is occurring. To rectify the situation, engine torque is reduced based on the amount of slip, the slip change rate, and the motorcycle's rolling and yawing behavior, helping to control and correct the slide. You can select from seven levels of slip control that cover a pretty broad range, with level one intervening less and level seven intervening more. Want to slide all over the place? The slip control intervention can be switched off, and you can also have three levels of engine braking adjustments at your fingertips. And when it comes to wheelies, when the system detects the rear wheel accelerating while the front wheel decelerates, a wheelie is the diagnosis, so engine torque is reduced based on the motorcycle's pitch angle, helping to bring the front wheel back down. There are three levels of wheelie control, with level one allowing intentional front wheel lift and level three making it much harder to wheelie. As with slide control, wheelie control can be switched off too for when you want to bring out your inner hooligan. And next up, when it comes to the transmission, you have two options to choose from. You have your standard manual transmission like the one we're looking at today, and then you have the DCT automatic transmission. The six-speed manual gearbox uses the same shift cam design as found on the CRF450R to ensure positive gear changes. The aluminum clutch center and pressure plate use assist cams to ease shifting for a lighter lever fill and slipper cams for deceleration and downshifting. The DCT transmission option is not something I'm going to do a deep dive on as I'll be making a separate video on that, but Here's a quickie with the highlights of the optional DCT transmission for the Africa Twin. And you don't have to worry about it being brand new technology and thinking to yourself that Honda still needs to iron out some of the kinks with it. Honda's first DCT debuted back in 2010 and is now available on over 15 different models ranging from motorcycles to ATVs and side-by-sides with the Africa Twin Revival in 2016 making it the first true adventure model from Honda with a DCT. And you have three modes on the transmission, depending on the mood you're in. Mode one is D, drive. It's an automatic setting for when you want comfort and optimum fuel efficiency. Mode two is S for sport. This one is an automatic setting that is suited for sportier riding as the ECU lets the engine rev a little higher before shifting up and shifts down sooner when decelerating for extra engine braking. There are three memorizable sub settings within the S mode from the more torquey, moderately sporty level one to the sportiest level three. And then you have mode three, which is manual. This is a setting that gives you full manual control, allowing you to change gears via handlebar triggers. And next up, when it comes to the gauges, Honda went all out as this is their coolest setup to date, in my opinion. It's a six and a half inch TFT LCD touch panel that helps simply viewing and understanding all of the data at your fingertips while still being able to focus on writing. And you can select from three screen display arrangements and background colors depending on personal preference. It is compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and can be connected to smartphones or headsets via Bluetooth. By connecting an Apple iPhone via USB cable, you and your passenger can issue voice control commands via a headset microphone in order to use the phone or apps like music, maps, and more. There's so much more that we could dive into with the display, but I've already went on for a lot longer than I planned, so we won't keep on about it. But if you do want to see more nitty gritty information, stuff that didn't make it into the video, head on over to HondaProKevin.com where I do deep dives into each model. And that's the 2021 Honda Africa Twin CRF 1100L standard model. What do you guys think about it? Are you fans of the two new color options from Honda, or do you wish they would broaden their palette a little bit, considering you only have one color option for one and one color option for the other? Uh, what do you think about the most recent changes, and what would you like to see Honda change in the future? You know, let me know in the comments down below. And that's it for this one. Thanks as always for watching, guys. I really appreciate the continued support, and we'll see you in the next one.